We're here in the Florida Keys with local Mike Millard. And so Mike, what kind of fishing do you think you're gonna do? Uh, today we're gonna go out to the reef. It's about a five mile run out to the reef. And we're gonna fish for yellowtail snapper by anchoring and chumming and fishing on the reef. But we'll also put some down lines and see if we can catch some grouper gotcha. or maybe a mutton snapper. So what we do in the morning is we go over to the local place Captain Hooks. I'll get three dozen shrimp. Now here we have our bait freezer. So what you see here is the chum box, which we get. Each one of these are seven pounds of chum. So I've got five boxes of chum in here. And I'll take one more for six boxes for uh, six hour fishing. Okay. So I've got my valley hoo on my bait bucket. I've got my chum and I've got my tackle box and I'll take my live shrimp down to the dock. So we're on uh, Mike Millard's local dock here. He brought his uh, gear and bait um, out here, his fishing tackle box um, with his chum and his bait. Um, this is what the Florida Keys is looking like this morning. Here's his boat that he'll be going out to fish in. It's a beautiful boat and very typical of the kind of boats that you use to fish in here in the Florida Keys, that it's perfect for going out to the reef. Uh, these boats, if you don't bring your own to the Florida Keys, are easy to rent at several local rental places that'll bring the boat to you and uh, tie it up to the, your dock so that it's at your location, your vacation rental home, when you get there. Uh, so this is the kind of boat he'll be going in. Like I said, we've got a box of chum to put in the water. And once you anchor the boat, you need to put them in a chum bag. And the chum bag that you want is one like this. You put them on your rear stabilizers, rear holes, and you can then put them behind the boat. Just drop them in the water and the chum will go behind the boat where you're gonna fish. You get ready to fish, you put your bait on your line and let your hook with the bait, same size as the chum, drift along with the chum so the yellowtail are eating chum and then they'll eat your bait and the other thing you need you need to have one of these a buff fishing you need to have buff. a buff because the reflection off the water can be very strong on your face and burn you pretty severely what i have here is an ugly stick with a pen six reel on it 3500 it's a nice light rod with 20 pound monofilament on the reel and you'll see 12 pound fluorocarbon leaders on it. So the fish can't see the line. And that's what you use for snapper. Okay. I have another one of a similar lighter rod, another pen pursuit. I'm gonna have to put these someplace where I don't know. Is that one for snapper too? Yeah, and so okay. is this one. All right. This is Cecilia's rod. It's a uh, same kind of reel, a nice little bit shorter rod so it's easier for her to handle. Yes. And she likes to have this colored line on it. Colored line allows you to know how much line you put out because it changes color every 15 feet. Oh, wow. And it's a braided line. And then you put your monofilament, your fluorocarbon leader on top of it so the fish can't see the line and your hook at the end of the fluorocarbon leader. That's She likes to know how much line she's putting out. Well, I don't blame her. And not only that, it's beautiful. I love the color. Yeah, and then these two rods are for fishing on the bottom. Okay. or trolling. These are Shimano Therese rods, seven foot rods with a pen rod, a pen reel, but this is the 5500, a bigger reel that I can put more line on. And I use 50 pound braid on it because I'll be trying to pull up grouper from the bottom. I'll fish with weights. Uh, this what is kind a, of bait do you use for the grouper? I use live pinfish, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So we have this kind, this is another heavy rod. It's another Shimano Therese, but I have an Okuma reel on it. Again, 60 pound braid, because you're fighting bigger fish. Typically we'll use jigs. So what you find is a lot of people use small jigs like this, and you'll put your shrimp or your bait on it. And the, the size of the weight of the yellow part is the weight, depends on how fast the current is. The current's very slow. You easily use no weight or a very small weight like this. And then if the current's very strong, you can use a bigger weight on it and you can get it down to the, where the fish are. So it just depends on the current. 
Well, out there, you're going to get sun from every direction. It's going to be really hot. It's going to reflect off the water. But you need the buff to protect you from the reflective heat, reflective sun, but you need one of these full rim hats. I have one that also pulls down. If you want to, you can pull out something to protect your neck and your shoulders and put it on your hand. This protects your neck from behind. This will keep the sun off of all of your face and this will keep it on in case it's very windy. And the idea is keep the face from burning, keep the sun from burning the sides of your face and doing skin damage. So we're kind of ready to go. We have what we need. We have a gaff, we have a net, tackle, we got bait, we got chum. There they are. There's our fishermen. There are the millards coming in after a day. Got lots of yellowtail in here. So right here, how to fillet a yellowtail? Yeah, like a pro. I don't like to cut into the stomach and clean the stomach out first, so I cut them along the bones of the ribs there, and then down along the background. But don't cut it completely through. So when you throw it over, you can cut the fillet, cut the skin off, and use this to hold the fire. Oh, that's brilliant! If you cut it all the way through, you have to hold this with your finger. Oh. It's very difficult, but this way. It just hangs on to the fish and you can play it right through. And here is this beautiful snapper that was caught this morning. Well, actually all day long. <laughs> and so it's only been out of the water for a few hours, essentially. Nicely filleted by Mike and um, ready to be prepared in a delicious way. This particular recipe is Sessie's and it involves panko crust. So Sessie, tell us what you do. Uh, I have a regular flour and I put a little bit of Old Bay and I have uh, eggs and panko, seasoned panko Which one? crumbs. Perfect. With crumbs. Nice. And I just grab the fish, put it over the flour. And then the egg, the egg, and then goes to the panko. And that's it. Beautiful.